Hello, everyone. Okay, please tell me we've got some major Unreal fans in the audience right now. It's so good, right? Okay, well, I don't know about you guys, but I fell in love with the series, like, hard head over heels when it premiered last summer. Some of you, if you caught up on Hulu in between the break, yay. As long as you're fans now, that's all that matters because this deliciously vicious series is just, it just warms my heart and it's only gonna get darker. You guys just saw episode six. I'm told that episode seven is the craziest one yet. So get excited. Uh, without further ado, let's bring out our panel right now. Yes. Woo, we have Shuri Appleby, Rachel. <laughs> Constance Zimmer, who plays Quinn. Yeah. <laughs> BJ Britt, our new suitor, Darius. Yeah. And Yoan Griffith, who comes Don't out as John Booth. And my name is Leanne Aguilera from Entertainment Tonight. I will be your moderator this afternoon. First off, Shuri, yes. we got to talk about episode six. Your performance was hauntingly mesmerizing in this. How did you approach Rachel's mindset and accomplish all this all while directing the episode? Yeah. Um, well, I actually find that the more I work on something in terms of like production wise, the stronger my performance gets as the actor because I know the story so much better. So um, I just, I think just knowing the story and, and I was feeling a little like at my own, like, oh my God, this is actually the most I can handle right now. Um, <laughs> kind of filtered in but sort of you know the real the theory that the writers were coming up with was she was kind of knocked off her socks at the end of 205 from from having an altercation with Jeremy and so her behavior is a little bit skittish and all over the place um, and what I like to do when I'm acting on set is I like to give as many different performances and many different levels as possible that way the editors can really cut you together so your performance seems like this so I know if I've given one performance at soft I'm gonna do another version and that's that's always kind of been my thing and so uh, directing and you know like turning over to the monitors being like where's my approval I'm like oh I have to give it to myself that was pretty good um, <laughs> I kind of just like let myself go all over the place and the, like you know after day two after day three and I was like okay I'm doing this I really just let myself go as wild as possible and thankfully I had um, a character arc that l that led to that for the cast, what was it like working with Shiri as your director? Be brutally honest. <laughs> uh, probably one of the worst experiences of my life. <laughs> no, it was one of the best experiences, actually. Because, you know, we know these characters so well. And what Shiri did that was so great from other directors is she really used so many different parts of the set that were also never used before, which also allowed the characters to have different colors just based on where they were coming and going, which was already an added bonus. And then on top of that, feeling so confident that she wanted everybody to be their best no matter what. And it was funny because I know that Craig had a moment where in the scene at the conference table, which he talked about saying that he really didn't think Chet would get that angry. And Shiri said, no, but you, I need you to do this color. Just do it for me. Just trust me. I believe it's going to work. And he was having a really hard time with it. But he trusted her because we all trusted her. And, you know, there's, you know, there's a lot going on in this episode. So we would have fun and then we would get really serious. <laughs> And then I would say, no, really, do you really think that I, should I cry? Because she actually had said to me from the get-go that she really wanted me to cry in that scene where I'm by myself. And I said, nah, I, I don't really think Quinn's going to cry in that moment. She's like, I would like you to try for me. <laughs> and I did. And I have to say, you know, seeing it now, like, it's really, it's really good. Thank you, Sherry. You're welcome. Um, I thought it was interesting because, you know, both of their lives are sort of going off in these different directions at the exact same time. 
and they were both set in the office and I figured, wait, there's a wall that's in between them. So what if we tell this story and like Quinn, uh, R Coleman and Rachel were supposed to be having sex. And so during the tone meeting, I call, you know, I was on the phone with the showrunner. I was like, would you guys be cool if like Coleman was going down on her instead? Because I've got this great idea for a shot where we pan through the wall and we go from like Quinn crying, we pan through and Rachel's having an orgasm, but it'll only work if he's going down on her. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a You're woman like, <laughs> taking control of the situation. <laughs> <laughs> but Sherry, I have a I have a question for you then. Yes. Could she hear your orgasm? No, well, we shot it. <laughs> no, she couldn't. <laughs> oh, please, my brother. A whole nother level. Is everybody, I sent the episode to my brother to say like, what did you think? He goes, it must have been so weird to direct yourself in sex scenes. That was his reaction. But um, no, it was just. <laughs> It's a love that that's my brother's reaction, but uh, it was, I thought, like a really interesting more moment story-wise, because these characters are really at odds for so much of the season to show that they're really like going in these opposite directions. But thankfully, you know, Constance and everybody else was really open to me kind of helping navigate these characters into different ways. Do you guys want to talk about it? I mean, for me, I just, I mean, Sherry would come up to direct me in between uh, takes and she'd say, why are you laughing? Why are you smiling? I was, I'm so proud of you. She was like, okay, well, I need you to, this is what I, you know, it, I was just, you know, it's just funny to see, you know, someone that you've been working with, now you're going to be directing me in this. And, and she was just, you know, I, I knew she had a lot on her plate. So some days she'd come and she'd be like, and I'd say, sure, you got this, you got this. And, and so it was just, I was, you know, for me just to sit back and watch her do her thing, it was amazing. It was, it was awesome. So. Well, BJ. Yes. Oh, what I do? <laughs> what I do? I'm sorry. I shouldn't have spoken. You are our new suitor this year. Yes. And I am. <laughs> isn't he doing such a good job, though? I mean, come on. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> How did you approach this character? Because we find out that he has so many different layers and so many secrets, and you guys still need to see episodes three and f or four and five, and you're going to find out a secret that he has been hiding. Uh, you know the secret? Oh, I know the secret. Oh, yeah. oh I know the secret. I know all the secrets. Yeah, uh, but how did you approach this character from the very beginning? What was your mindset? Um, my mindset, well, I got a chance to speak with the uh, writers and producers before coming into doing this. And, um, you know, Sarah pulled me to the side and she's like, you know, I don't know what it's like to be black, you know? And so she said, so if we do something or the writers, you know, write something that's not, you know, fully authentic or, you know, fully up to par, just let us know so we can tweak it and make it, you know, as authentic as and, and as real as possible, which made my job as an actor that much more comfortable, that much more easier, and it just made me just go in it, you know, head first, you know, so. It was great, you know, the, one of the things that we, I really like about the show, there's a, there's a lot of freedom. Um, we, we like, definitely like improv and try to make moments as real as possible, and so we were shooting the fight scene, and, um, Beth Ann says to him, you know, I love you. And his reaction was like this. And I was like, BJ, just in the next day, just like say something. So I've got something. He's like, pump your brakes, dude. Pump your brakes. Pump your brakes. Pump your brakes. Amazing. Oh, that's in there. Pump your brakes. Pump your brakes. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I was like, perfect. <laughs> Cut. Move on. Move that's on. That's amazing. Uh, okay. <laughs> you got that. Pump your brakes. Pump your brakes. Pump your brakes. I didn't realize Unreal. that that was yeah. improvised because I know that you improvise a lot actually on the show, BJ. I'm sorry? You improvise quite a bit on the show. A little bit, a little bit. You know, but I mean, the, that's why I, I love working on the show because they, they give you that freedom and, and they, they make you, um, they, they put you at ease and comfortable just to be able to do that and live and just have fun. And, and like I said, that was, the, you know, you just saw the episode that she directed. It was just so much fun just to be able to live and just, you know, the words are there, you know, just have fun with it. You know, she made it a fun experience. Well, Yoan, hello. Hello. Welcome to Unreal. We're Thank so you. excited to have you. <laughs> now, when your character first makes his debut in episode four, he admits that he's the biggest everlasting fan of all time, which is amazing. <laughs> How big of an Unreal fan were you before you joined the show? Well, here's the thing. I uh, was a newcomer to the show last uh, season. I had not seen it. I received the script and was curious, and then watched the first episode and proceeded to watch the entire series within 24 hours. <laughs> so 
I feel that I'm one of those lucky fans that won a competition to be on the show Unreal. And if you ask the guys, when I arrived on the first day, I was slightly in awe and more nervous than I've ever been on e any job because I'm looking at my beloved characters directly in the eye and I'm touching the... The, the set and go, oh my God, this, this, this is where you guys shoot this and this is where you guys shoot that. Uh, so I'm a, a total uh, geeking out sort of fanboy of the show. And uh, there were times, and, and Constance will attest to this, that I'm sort of watching myself watching the show whilst I'm directly in the show. So it was a, a really bizarre uh, experience. But Ultimately, one of the most satisfying experiences I've had uh, as, as an actor, uh, because of these guys. I mean, uh, you know, we've just been praising Shiri, but uh, it was an amazing experience to have her, uh, an actor that you admire so much, direct you and, and give you free reign and allow you to do your thing. And then to work with Constance was just a, a, a dream come true. So I, it's really elevated my game as an actor to be part of this show, and I'm so proud of it. And we actually have an audience question, so thank you, Carly Lewis. Uh, is there, and this is for everyone, is there anything you find particularly helpful when figuring out a new character? Also, is there a practice you find especially useful for stepping in and out of your characters while filming? I mean, well, for me, um, for when I um, start working on a new show, like, for instance, I like soundtracks. Like, I'll make a soundtrack of music to fit that character. So I had a, a really nice 12 songs of, of music that I would play, you know, during the, during the day or in my trailer or heading to work in my headphones. And, um, you know, it's something that I do for me, for my character. It just keeps me in that mood. And, you know, like, I don't care what goes on. Like, an earthquake could happen. And then as soon as I play that music, I'm right back in the zone. But that's, that's just for me. Certain actors have... Different, you know, different texts that they use. That's just something I use. You yeah, want to know awesome. what? I know you. I knew you're gonna ask. I want to know one song. Just give me one song. Mm. That's Darius Baby got back. Baby got back. No. Uh, no um, three. I you want three like, songs? No. I'm looking for one. I feel like if oh, we get oh, one out. What are you doing? Like, <laughs> come on. <laughs> yeah, come on. No, just uh, one. I'll just give you an artist. I like. Uh, I, I'm a fan of Drake. So one, one of the, you know, one of the artists. So just stop. Why would you quit? You know, so, you know, that was one of my artists. So, you know, you know, so, yeah. All right, next. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, what, uh, I would say for me, um, something that won't get me in trouble. Uh, it, I, for Quinn in particular, just because it's so fresh, uh, it's really comes down to, I hate to say it, but the wardrobe, the shoes, the clothes, the makeup, the hairstyle, and it and and it kind of happens as a progression in the makeup trailer. It's just kind of like starts with the makeup, and then I'm like, oh, there she is a little bit, and then I get the hair, and it's so specific, and and I'm like, oh, there's that. I don't really like that hair. Okay, but then I start to go in, and then I put on the shoes, and I put on the dress, and I'm like, oh, I'm so uncomfortable. It's all fine, but then. Uh, and then I, it, so for me, it really is the whole uh, wardrobe look. And that the props. Constance is a real, she's very fanatic about her props. I have a little bit of OCD. <laughs> but, but I mean, it gets me into the character as far as just like the whole look and the feel of the character is definitely. What's this prop thing? I want to know what I is do this? tell. She, Constance needs, I mean, I say it with the, because we're the total opposite. Like, I couldn't care. I like hair and makeup. I'm like, do it as fast as possible. Just get me out of here. I like don't want to bother with props. Constance wants to know exactly what prop is where and where is this prop and would this prop make sense for this scene? And like, she's right. And then I was, it works. Continuity. She's like, sure, your hair wouldn't be down on this scene because in the last scene, did it? I, I don't want people to focus on things that don't matter when they're watching a scene. I want them to be all focused here. So for me, if like if I was an audience member and I was watching a scene and I was like, oh, that's weird, her hair, why was her hair that way when it was this way in the other scene? That is distracting. So I'm helping all of you audience you members yes. to you focus on the work. <laughs> Okay. What was the original question? Okay. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Shiri. Um, uh, I think what, to find a character, I usually need to like emotionally connect to something, obviously, in the character to tell the story. So 
um, I don't know whatever it is, but like to, to kind of separate at the end of the day, I think that's actually a really good question because it's so hard to do, especially when you have emotional things and it's hard to not feel exhausted or drained or feel emotional in your own life because of it. So like a hot bath, you know, venting a little bit to the people that you love. Um, but it's really just kind of trying to do something I find that's like mind numbing, like the internet kind of helps me. Just things that are like, I gotta kind of like check out of this because like a character like Rachel, for instance, is incredibly emotionally volatile. And so if I came home and behaved that way, <laughs> I wouldn't have a family. So, <laughs> you know, just things that, things that kind of help you like unwind is really what I, what I do. Anything you want to add? No, nothing. I mean, it's, it's a combination of, uh, as Constant was saying, from, from the outside in, as we say, you know, from the costume, from the makeup, from the hair, and a combination of the inside out. I mean, there are so many things that you can grab onto. Um, and it, over the years, it just becomes instinctively, I think. And as far as uh, letting it go at the end of the day, I'm British. I, I'm afraid I reach for the bottle. <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> uh, Constance, I feel like Quinn has really upped up her own bar of ruthless and vindictive behavior. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> and, and with most other characters on TV, it would push them over that cliff into the realm of unlikability. And yet, every time she's doing something truly awful, I still care about your character. How do you find that balance of keeping her still likable and not turning her into a strictly just a villain? Well, thank you, first of all. Uh, I would say that I actually don't try to make her likable. <laughs> Uh, because it's more about her situation and who she is being relatable. There's a lot of things that she does where we are using entertainment value uh, to move the story along that I don't know that you necessarily could get away with in real life, let's be honest. But I also didn't know that Quinn was funny until I watched the first season of the show. I mean, I would do these scenes and I would say these horrible things to people's faces and I couldn't, there was nothing about me that could think that that was funny or, or I couldn't judge it at all. And so then when I started watching the first season, when I started watching episodes, I was like, wow, I could actually be meaner. And because I just didn't think it would come across as being funny. And so then I thought, oh, okay. So, but now it is, because now I'm very concerned about this season being that I'm too mean. Um, so I, I, I'm not quite sure if now I've gone over the line or not. Hopefully not. But uh, I just say thank you. I mean, I was terrified that people were gonna hate Quinn when we first started shooting. I was, every day I was calling the network and I was emailing them and I was saying, they're gonna hate me, I'm so mean. And they just kept saying, nope, just keep doing what you're doing. Everyone's gonna love you. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Well, pulling upon your past uh, as an actor, who do you think is more ruthless, Quinn or Ari Gold from Entourage? Well, because, you know, it's funny. I kind of modeled Quinn on, I, I, she's Ari Gold meets Anna Wintour, is what I thought. Um, I, but I feel like Ari Gold's more ruthless, maybe because he's a man. And maybe from a woman, we have a still a little bit more heart. There's a little bit more where we've given birth, or some of us are not, but there's that mothering thing. Sorry, I just got into a whole lot of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just think maybe, be, I don't know, because he didn't, I mean, he had the relationship with his wife, but it was also pretty volatile. I think Quinn has the, the love relationship with Rachel that will always, I think, continue to make her feel a little bit more warm i don't know maybe well, and it's, maybe not it's been so interesting to see the dynamic between you guys when you're not on the same team this year you guys really go at each other's throats what's it like for you guys to be able to stretch that acting muscle with each other and go into those dark places i mean constance really didn't like it no, I mean, honestly, like she was like on set being like, I don't like this. I like like being on the same team. 
Um, and, she, and rightfully so, I felt the same way, but at the same time, Constance is a very good actress, and it was really fun to work with her in this different capacity and see how the two of us could go in these different directions and fight against each other. So I actually kind of enjoyed it. Um, and also the interesting thing is about working with somebody that you really personally like was that whenever she would get emotional, it would trigger the emotion in me. And so our, our performances were that much richer because of it. So, I mean, I personally enjoy the fact that we went in a totally different direction this season. I, I, did, I, I made me sad. I got really sad all the time. I was like, I'm so mean to you. And you're so cute. Like, Constance, let's go to our trailer <laughs> and hang out. Who cares? But I, and I kept asking the writers, I was like, we are going to come back together in the end, right? Like, just let me know that they're going to come back together. I just need to know that they're going to be together in the end. <laughs> and so when they, when they said, yes, you will end up together in the end, I was like, okay, well then, fuck her. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I, we're not on television. I can curse, right? Sorry if I offended anyone. It's only going in this room. on YouTube. It's fine. It's on the internet. Oh, I'm so sorry, internet users, as if they haven't heard that word before. <laughs> uh, well, Yon, I'm curious to know. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious to know. You know, uh, the audience has yet to see how Quinn and John meet, and it's actually a really interesting dynamic. Uh, why do you feel like John is a good match for Quinn? I don't think anybody comes up to the standard of Quinn, um, uh, but uh, I think John gets there in in the fact that he sees what we as an audience love about Quinn, I think, the fact that she is, uh, yes, as, as, as much as she can be mean and nasty and, and, and while she's working, that she is somebody that does care, who is passionate, um, and who has the capacity to love, and loves her show, loves her job, uh, loves Rachel, and, um, and I think he sees that. And he's a guy who's uh, clearly uh, worked hard to get where he's got, and I think there's a mutual respect and admiration there. I think only somebody like John Booth would sort of uh, reach that sort of uh, standard uh, that Quinn has set for herself. I'm sorry, I love their relationship so much. I just really want you guys to like, I don't want to give it away for you, but um, one of my all-time favorite things about the show is not only the friendship and the dynamic between Quinn and Rachel, but also seeing Rachel kind of self-sabotage every relationship that she's in. Um, Sherry, can she, since we are going to cuss, can Rachel ever have her shit together? Well, she doesn't get it together this year. I'm going to be honest about it. She does not figure it out. And she is a self-sabotaging character um, because she doesn't really know what makes her happy. Peter O'Fallon, who's our uh, like he, our main director, producer, he like always says that you could kind of push Rachel this way and she'll go that way. You could push her this way and she'll go that way. She doesn't know what it means to be happy. She doesn't trust anyone. And her way of maneuvering through the world is through manipulation. And how is this relationship going to best serve me? Me. So every, you know, it's even like, uh, so now Coleman, we've seen that they've gotten together and it's really not about like, oh, I like this guy or I love this guy. It's like, I'm at odds with Quinn. This guy might be a good person that I can ride to the top with. And this guy might be able to stand up against Quinn for me. I'm going to hook myself up to him. And that's really the basis of what their relationship is about. Not that she would say that to him, but she's that kind of calculating character. So whenever there's situations that she's put into, I, when I'm working on it beforehand, I have to figure out like, what is this girl looking for? And how is she relating to these people? And what is she trying to get? And those are the, that's how you create the relationships out of asking all of those questions. So I'm curious to know, since you're just among your closest friends here today, um, and we're already in the know, we saw a very tanned very handsome blast from the past. Mr. Adam come back at the end of season, of episode six. Yes. Like, yes. Hottie McCotty. He came Mc back from Westeros. So yes. how is he going to shake things up moving forward? Well, as we see in episode six, Quinn is very unhappy with Rachel and this partnership that she has with Coleman. So the reason he's coming back amongst my friends here is because Quinn is basically trying to say, I got to sabotage 
Rachel and I got to take Rachel down and I have to break this relationship up. So he is really coming back here motivated by Quinn to sort of get Rachel back. Yeah, to, to, to break up the relationship with Coleman, not sabotage you. Um, that's kind of the same thing. I, but mean, <laughs> <laughs> I see it from a different perspective. Mm, kind of the same thing, but mm. go ahead. <laughs> Um, I mean, he looks really good in a really tight pair of shorts and nothing else. That's all I'm saying. Just like this guy over here. The women, we really like to get the women in no clothes. I mean, we really like to get the men in no clothes on this show. Which is why I'm wondering when are we going to get a sutress so that we can just have a bunch of guys around. That's the question we were asking today. I said it like, what are they going to do next season? Like, how are they going to shake it up? Wouldn't it be interesting to see like Rachel and Quinn surrounded by 25 men? How many guys would Rachel have sex with? <laughs> do you want to do you want to do like an office pool right now? Should I mean, we call it I now? feel like she might hit them all. I don't know. Oh, no. Not me personally, and not me. Oh, Rachel. Well, maybe there'd be a lot of games of like Mary blank oh, Mary kill. kill, Mary sex kill. I was gonna say the other word again, but I've held myself there back. You go. Good. Sorry. Good. Yeah. Well, BJ, what I'm curious to know is, would you like to pull a Freddy and pop in in season three? Oh! <laughs> Let me see. Oh, Let me see. Um, How do you always cause trouble? What are you talking about? I'm just asking you a question. Um, I'd love to come back for season three. You know, uh, who knows? I mean, it could happen. I'm, I'm always available. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. You just are you just gonna pop it and just do a random like bitch please? Yeah, and then exactly. <laughs> That's what we'll do. That's what we'll do. I'm just gonna be quiet now. <laughs> Uh, well, we have another audience question. This is from Kate, and it's for Shiri. Uh, this is from Kate for Shiri, but I think anyone can answer this. Um, how is the casting process like for this show? And then she added an anecdote that she wants to be hot Rachel number two next season. So, woo! That's cute. We'll take another hot Rachel. Um, <laughs> the casting process for this show for me uh, was I was sent the script along with the short, um, and I had to come in and audition. I mean... Um, and so, you know, I read this script and I remember sitting outside with my husband at night and I was like, I think it's really good. I don't know. Should I go in? It's on Lifetime. And he was like, just go, just, you just go to the audition. And I like came from the gym and I remember I was wearing like clothes that didn't match. I was like, you know, you don't want to like dress like the character when you go to the audition, but you definitely want to dress close enough so they get that you can look like that. And I remember um, Sarah Shapiro, and I always would, she was like, I don't know, the character's so, I don't imagine her so pretty. And I was like, I feel like shit about myself on the inside. It's fine, it's fine. Like, <laughs> I always love to go to the audition and be like, no, I know I'm not what you imagine, but I'm exactly what you need. You know, like, let me just tell you. And um, so I went to the audition, you know, did the stuff. And the thing that was so interesting about the short, how natural it was. Um, and so I really just tried to uh, play it like as real as I possibly could. Um, and then I had to go again and do like a chemistry read and come in with like four different outfits in the bag and then go to studio and go to network. Like, you know, I like, they put me through, they put me through the ring. I had to go to network, I had to go to, you know, all the same things. Um, but to be honest with you, I'm a little crazy. I like that stuff. I like put my headphones on, I listen to Britney Spears, I'm like, I'm gonna take these bitches down. I'm going in there and I'm gonna fucking ruin the room and there's no way that I'm not getting this job. And that's the way, like, pi like pilot season's a little, I mean, I, kn I don't know when pilot season's coming up, but I was always like, if I don't get that first pilot, I knew I wasn't getting it. Cause I was like, I'm gonna murder right away, but if I didn't murder, I was like, done. But when I went in, it was like headphones, and like circus, and like dancing, and they call my name, I'm like, get out of the way, ladies, this is my job. That's it. <laughs> so that's how I got the job. <laughs> Like, I love hearing the soundtrack. I know, like it's, I mean, it's, it's not. If, I would not circus. have said Britney Spears. I don't Spears. know why. It's every year, Life Unexpected. The same thing it was Britney Spears Circus, and I was like, I am gonna get this. <laughs> Did you fellas have to audition as well? They actually just offered me the role. No, I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm like, playing. Okay, then. I'm playing. So playing. So lying. 
I had to go back multiple times. Okay, gosh. And I was like, really? No, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, no. Um, and it's funny. Well, funny story because, um, you know, I went back. I, I auditioned for it back in December right before Christmas. And um, as up and comers, I mean, sometimes you have busy years and sometimes you have slow years, you know. So, um, you know, um, I do another show called Being Mary Jane, and we had already shot that. And he's like, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, um, and so um, I went on multiple auditions that year after we wrapped, you know, and everything, and put nothing the entire year. So this was the last project for the year. My agent was like, yo, B, this is the last thing. I was like, Lord, let me get this one. <laughs> and, and so, you know, and so he was like, BJ, look, you know, they loved you when you went in. The casting directors love you. They want to bring you back. I was like, so we can do this before Christmas? Or he was like, no, it won't be this year. It'll be, you know, right after the holidays. They'll bring you in in January. I was like, okay. So now they make you wait, like, you know, all of Christmas holiday when you're just sitting there just, twiddling your thumbs like that, just wait, that just wait. And so um, then it was supposed to be the first week back in uh, January, and then it was supposed to be the next week, and I was just like, you know, and then when they finally brought me in, I met with the producers, of course, and um, they were going to use that tape for the network to, you know, choose off of, so I wouldn't have to go to the network and all that good stuff. But um, my agent uh, called me, he was like, BJ, listen, they're going to ask you to take your shirt off when you go in there. Just to give you a heads up, I was like, dude, I'm cool. I work out, man. It's whatever. You know? Right? And so um, I go in to read, and then Sarah and them, they're like, BJ, great read. We love your read. But um, we're going to need you to take your shirt off. Is that okay? I was like, it's all good. It's whatever, y'all, you know? <laughs> I take my shirt off and everything, you know? And they're like, okay, great. Thanks so much. All right. I leave. You know, as soon as you get outside, yo, they, I killed it. I killed it. I killed it. I took my shirt off and everything. It was great. And so uh, two days later, my team calls me like, BJ, they loved your read. You got the part. I was like, great. They said, the network said you need to work out, though. I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, uh, you really? He's like, yeah. But I get it. He's a football player. I didn't look like a football player at all. My, uh, my boy, Dion, he used to play football. He was like, look, if you want to look like me, I'll take you under my wing. And I was like, I hate you, but yes, I need to. So my eating habits changed. My workouts changed. Like I'm working out two and a half hours a day, six days a week, eating every two and a half hours, uh, like meals. Like you get to the point where it's just like routine. You just, you don't care if it's hot or cold. You just put it in your body. <laughs> at that point and so uh but yeah that was my audition process so you know but yeah i'm here <laughs> hey that was me <laughs> yeah Thanks, David. listen i've been through the ringer uh several hundred times over as we all have uh but for this one it was one of those delightful phone calls would you please come and uh, play this part so that's how it happened for me on this particular show but uh yes yeah <laughs> Constance, are you like Shiri? Do you get pumped up by auditions? Do you actually enjoy them? I, uh, I like being in the room. I do like playing to an audience. I mean, I started uh, doing plays and theater and doing sitcoms and always being in front of an audience. So I really do like it, but I'm definitely not as confident as Shiri. I don't, I don't, I, I wish I had like a soundtrack that I could listen to that way. Me be like, bitches, watch out. <laughs> I'm not, I'm like in the corner and I'm like, okay, Constance, just don't say something where you stick your foot in your mouth. Just walk in, just do the words on the page and smile and just keep going. And I'm always, whenever I leave the room, I throw the sides away. I, w I always throw the sides away. I'm like, I don't want to think about it. I did it. What's done is done. If it's my job, it's my job. That's it. If they want me, they want me. If they don't, they don't. I can't pretend to be anybody else that I'm not. And that, I think, for me, was really one of the bigger lessons was I was constantly trying to do what other people did or be what other actors do. And once I finally realized this is who I am, this is what I look like, this is what I can do, so you either want me or you don't. I can't be something that you don't want me to be. Well, and, and going off of that, what is each of your, like, mantra? What's a piece of advice that you've received about acting itself that you guys have really kept close to your heart? Well, I, just because I was just talking, and I'll probably forget if I let all of them talk again. For me, I, was, I had one acting teacher say to me, you are enough. Period. 
because we're always trying to do more because we don't think we're enough. We always think, wait, if I'm funnier, if I'm prettier, if I'm skinnier, if I, you know, we all just think that it's more, 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 but it's not. You are who you are and you are enough. And that was my best thing. Yeah, cool. I was going to say something. I was going to try and figure out one, too, that I'd gotten, but somebody said that to me as well because mm -hmm. I was just trying to do too much. It was like, you're enough. What you have right now inside of you is enough. So I'm piggybacking off of that. My best girlfriend actually said it to me the other day. She's an actress also. We were talking about um, getting jobs. And like in between jobs, I'm like really kind of like, I need to get a job, I need to get a job. And like the emotions, and how come I didn't get this? And it's like a real roller coaster. I really care, I really like to work. And she was saying, Shiri, Shiri, the right jobs find you. It do, you can go through that whole process and you can have all that anxiety and it doesn't make a difference. You can go through that process and have a good time and have fun and relax and the same job is going to find you regardless. And it's totally true. You know, those jobs that you're like, I want this so bad, I want this so bad, and then you see it and you're like, I'm not even right for that. Like, what was I, and then I beat myself up for like two months. Like for me, it's crazy. I've spent my whole life in this business. I started acting when I was three. So like the up and down of the roller coaster in the years, like I'm already prepping myself. Usually when you do a TV show, I know Constance is like, let it go. But it's like the year afterwards, you get off the show and then you don't work for a year because business needs like a break from you. And then for that year, I'm like having like heart palpitations. And it's like, just relax. Like the next thing is going to come find you again. I mean, uh, I wish I could say it, it gets easier, um, but honestly, last uh, I'm just sharing something completely random here. But I, I went up, I went up for uh, Homeland, and I was right for the part, and everything was, you know, um, it was a, it was a very respectful audition in the sense that there was a handful of people going up for this role, and everybody that all the decision makers were in the room, and. I remember sitting outside the room, and Damien Lewis was on the poster, who was at the um, Fox there on the executive floor, and I had a tap on my shoulder. This is, uh, Johan, uh, you're up next. And the gentleman that had left the room bumped into an executive on the floor of a show that he was in the previous season that got canceled. But he was a recognized guy, <laughs> and the executive goes, hey man, what are you doing, man? Oh, I just auditioned for this Homeland. Homeland? I know those guys. I know those guys. Let me let me take you back in there. So I'm wa I'm walking to I'm walking towards the room, and this guy has been brought back into the room by another executive from another show. Guys, guys, look no further. This guy. This is the guy. What are you guys doing? This is the guy. And I'm stood there behind him in the in the door frame, going, "Oh shit! Keep it together. Keep it together. Keep it together." <laughs> anyway, I walk in and I have an outer body experience. I do not remember the audition to this day. Just a blackout. I don't even know if I did it in the American accent, which <laughs> was re required for the role. <laughs> but ironically, two weeks later, I was with another casting director, and I wasn't getting it for another show. She was like, you're not, you're not getting it. You're not finding it. You're not doing it. Um, I want you to do what you did in the Homeland audition. <laughs> And I went, how, well, A, how did you see the Homeland audition? I saw the Homeland audition. It was amazing. It was all of you out there on the floor, blood, sweat, and tears. And I said, if that's what it takes to get a part, I don't want any part of this ever again. <laughs> so um, uh, sort of the opposite, really. Uh, I was really pleased to get the phone call to come and do this because, so I wouldn't have to go through that uh, horrible, painful process. But... Um, Listen, as, uh, even with 30 years' experience, it, it doesn't get any easier, and I still haven't figured it out. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And as someone who's been to more sets than I can count, I can say that from experience visiting your guys' set, it is so delightful, so warm, and so welcoming. And I want to know, Shearing Constance, is that a vibe that you intentionally put out there so that everybody else follows in that? Absolutely. I mean, when we first got together, you really know when you're on a set that like the first few people's names on the top of the call sheet really set the tone. And we were like, we, you know, we're both mothers. We're both incredibly hardworking. We're both professional. We've had long careers. We're like, let's make this an incredibly positive environment where everyone can do their best work. But at the same time, let's go home. 
Do you know what I mean? Like, let's come knowing our lines. Let's come having done our homework. Let's not like trap writers in the corner asking for rewrites. Like we ask, like we have a 24 hour rule. So no writer, we won't ask any of the writers for changes 24 hours before we shoot something, but writers don't give us new pages 24 hours before. Do you know what I mean? So like, it's really professional. So we come in, we've got 12 hours, we've got seven days, it's really fast. But like, it's a good time. People are laughing, having fun. I mean, Johanna and Freddie fell in love on set. Like, yeah. it's a pretty positive environment. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's at the same time, like, let's go home. But it is true because we change casts every season. So it is important that we, we, you know, we are the welcoming group. And even the first season, obviously, we had just done it, and none of us really knew what we were doing or what the show was going to become. So the second season, I think it was even more important to bring new people on and show them, like, this is a good time. We all play really messed up, dark, mean characters, but when the cameras aren't rolling, it's a party. <laughs> This yeah. is actually very true. I was so scared. I don't, uh, so I was actually in the season two premiere uh, as the reporter. She's the reporter when he says, bitch, please. Yes, yes. Awesome That's job. Uh-huh. But no, but, and by the way, I got my SAG card because of that, so yeah. thanks, y'all. But, but I will say the vibe on set is just so incredibly welcoming and so amazing. So really, that's just a tribute to both of you guys for setting that tone. Uh, we're running out of time, but what I want to know is, as you look forward to Unreal, we know we have season three. What is on your Unreal bucket list? What do you hope to see for the series? I can't wait to have Constance direct. Aw, you're so cute. <laughs> you're I don't know how to follow that. Um, Can't wait for me to direct again. That's right. Well, but that's on. Oh, okay. Well, I do it. That was. Whoa. Go Whose ahead. bucket list is that? We've already seen that. Uh, bucket list. I don't know. Can you guys come up with one, even though you're not on the show? No. I'm not coming back. Uh, no, that's what I said. That's I was, right. Actually, I actually, I was coming back, you guys. Like, you know. Okay. So bucket list for you to come back and for you to come back. Yeah, yeah, we'll go there that. we go. See. <laughs> wow, really? We're playing a penis game up here in case you guys were wondering why he keeps whispering in my ear. What there, I just about? called you oh out. My God, what would you go Have you guys about? ever played the penis game? <laughs> we just Please learned about it with it. the room, Constance. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Oh, we just learned about, about it this room. morning. You guys, we've been doing we've been doing press at six o'clock this morning. We're a little loopy. But so grateful. It's all because of you, the fans, and people that are watching the show. So they told us about the penis game. Extra, extra. The woman said to us, have you guys ever played the penis game? And I'm like, oh, my God, what, we're going to get in trouble. And she goes, one person says it really quietly. Then the next person says it a little louder. And then the next person says it louder to the point where you're, like, screaming penis. I can't believe that. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, you can't. You guys, I totally just to produced her into saying penis in front of a large group of two people. Yeah, look at I that. I did it. I did it. Yes! yes exactly. Goal accomplished. Okay. Thank you very much. And on that note, thank you all so much for being here today. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> thank you. Oh,